Our delegation came to the Senate. The station itself looked like a work of art. Instead of our preference for spherical shapes, this space station was lean, with a mixture of both curves and straight lines expressing beauty, elegance, greatness, and dare I say, terror to those who would oppose it. Thousands of guns and shield generators made it appear as if glistening with stars from the reflection of the blue giant it was orbiting. Our delegation entered the Senate room, surely one of the wonders of the universe. The roof was open to the light of the star. The senators were arrayed on either side of the main corridor. At the end, the three founding members of the Galactic Senate, and above them, the Eternal Emperor. The entire Senate Hall looked like a cathedral dedicated to the Eternal Empire. Our delegation walked the long hall until we reached the podium, where only I stepped forwards. The emperor stood from his seat and descended. It was long, and the emperor's bipedal form took every step deliberately. Its white hair, short and flowing, his beard, as we learned, trimmed and proper. His black cloak gave the impression of being made of a thousand colors as it reflected in the light of the blue sun. His impressive white suit, shimmering like a dream, his elegantly displayed ornamentation only enhanced his natural form. Were I a poet, I would say that put naked in the snow, the emperor would lose none of his elegance and put anyone else in his clothes, and they could only be seen as a pretender. Everything about him from his calm but focused demeanor, his slow and methodical walk down the steps and the resonance of his footsteps in the hall, to the attention he commanded, to the beams of light built into the architecture which made him appear otherworldly, almost ethereal. He came closer, to my level, mere meters away from me, and projected his voice. Delegate Feral of the Fell, you have come to pledge your allegiance to the Eternal Throne. His voice sounded like a command. I spoke up. I knew that I could not compete with him, but I only needed to be heard. No, a murmur rang across the hall. After a lot of discussion, the choice has been left to me. I need to see proof of the power of the Eternal Empire, the justice of the Eternal Empire, the reason why you want us to join, and whether it truly deserves its namesake before I make my decision. The Eternal Emperor did not speak. One of the founding members, the creature was a yowl, resembling a six-legged jacot or lemur, spoke. How do you wish to know it then, Ambassador? Your history, I replied. Tell me your history. Another of the founding members replied, the Rupar this time a quadruped not unlike a deck or lizard. You have our files. You know everything you could want. I replied once more, we know facts, not intentions. Your history is mired with both angelic deeds and horrific atrocities. Why did you do those? What will you bring attention to? I was sent to understand how your collective mind works. That is why I have been given ultimate power on this decision. The third and last representative was a Tyrell looked a bit like acrylic or eagle, bipedal and with large eyes. That is a wise move, but to put the trust of an entire civilization into one person, into one envoy, that is a lot of faith to put into one person. Why you? At this, I looked at the emperor, immobile like a statue. His species did not appear on any codex or reading whatsoever. Taller and larger than almost any creatures here, yet still filled with quiet grace and power. Immobile like a rock staring back at me. You seem to not be unfamiliar with putting your trust into one man. I was chosen after much instruction and deliberation. I was trained from the moment we realized how complex your history really is. After a brief pause, the emperor slowly moved forwards deliberately and strongly. I could feel my aides almost panicking. I did my best to stand firm as his predatorial eyes penetrated and traversed me, but still I betrayed nothing. The eternal emperor of unknown origin stood one meter from me, his eyes narrowed. After a pause several seconds too long, he finally boomed in a deep but natural timber, you will hear the truth then. The emperor relaxed. So did I. My name is Kadomian and I have founded the Eternal Empire 3,000 years ago. His voice commanded absolute certainty and betrayed no frailty whatsoever. The Eternal Empire was founded by the Tyrol, the Rupar, and the Yowl, but it was founded under my guidance. Before the Empire, there was only war and decay, their three kingdoms fighting over the smallest scraps of resources by suffering peoples. 
People who knew little of the ways of the wider galaxy. People who were fools and short-sighted. People who required guidance to prosper. People who did not know their neighbors and so hated with a vigor I have not seen since my youth. The ambassador was visibly disturbed. The strong words were the words of a tyrant. Emperor Kedomian smiled and walked past the ambassador, facing the great corridor and the leagues of senators behind the fell. There was no re-education campaign, nothing to force anyone anywhere. Only the intelligence of the founding species managed to create the empire 3,000 years ago. It was then that the Senate was created, though it was upgraded many times over the years. The people, all the people, prospered under a newfound equality of opportunity. The greatest among them would become leaders in their fields. Those even greater would achieve a status few could ever hope to imagine, their names plastered on monuments far and wide. Those who were not were taught to find their own path. They were taught to be able to make their own decisions, and very rarely was there any problem. There is only one rule, one rule which citizens can never break. Never accuse your leaders. Show your discontent in other ways, but never accuse the leader of anything that can never be proven or has not ever been a problem. Even the thought of it is highly punishable. The ambassador half recoiled at the notion. It sounds as if you forgot the various revolts you put down, or the almost genocidal wars you have waged, Emperor. The Emperor smiled again and turned towards the fell ambassador. I have not, his tone more somber and his eyes sadder. Tragic, but all necessary. The Eternal Empire must defend itself from threats both internal and external. People have almost absolute freedom. They can work in any job they wish and in conditions which maximize both their productivity and their happiness. Our almost holy purpose to promulgate our way of life to all creatures so that they too may enjoy it gives them purpose if they cannot find it themselves. Tell me, you have freedom, purpose, happiness, fulfilling work, intelligence, opportunity. What more do you want? The fell ambassador was a bit taken aback. This was not a question he was expecting. Of course it is possible that the system itself is wrong in some way, but we are constantly improving it. More often than not, the revolts were created by sloth, stupidity, and decay. I do not tolerate decay in my empire any more than I tolerate it in my body. As for the wars, I do not tolerate threats or subjugation. Some people cannot be changed. Defeating them only brings about more animosity and more suffering. If we cannot simply defeat them, we must destroy them. Regrettable but necessary. Kedomian walked away towards his throne. Any other questions? The ambassador looked at the emperor walking away. Was he lying? It seemed too good to be true. What was this? One last question, he said. The emperor slowly drew to a stop and turned, head level with the ground. Who are you? A deathly silence came across the room. The tension was palatable as 37 species held their breaths. The emperor looked back, deep eyes locked into the ambassador's. What seemed like hours passed before the ambassador shifted his gaze. Finally, the eternal emperor spoke while slowly walking towards the ambassador. I am Emperor Kidomian, unique of his name, liberator of a thousand sons, founder of the eternal empire, bringer of the long peace and of the imperial creed. I am one of the only humans in this galaxy and one of the last of the old order. For the last 3,000 years, I have been the sword and shield of civilization. For the last 3,000 year I have forged an empire which will stand for all time. A beacon of hope lit throughout the cosmos which will bring light to the darkness caused by the decline of my people. I will bring back the light of civilization lost eons ago and make it greater than it ever was before. The emperor stopped centimeters from the ambassador's face, close enough for his eyes to bore into the now much smaller frame of the fell. You asked who I was. That is who I am. What is past is past. You now decide the future of your people. Join us and prosper. You will be gifted a place where all sentients deserve to be. Several hours had passed before finally, the emperor was alone in the throne room. All the others had left before him, as always. He looked up to the star, Gravel, it was called. A distant star in a distant galaxy. Julius Kadomian's plan was going well. He would turn this galaxy into a force to be reckoned with but he still had much technology to plant to ensure that they would stand ready. When the Terrans finally arrive, they will not find barbarians. They will find a wall, one which they cannot pass through. A human figure came out from behind the emperor's throne. My emperor, they have come, she said. 
The emperor smiled. Yes, all is finally going according to plan. The old order will rise again.